Good morning. Thank you all for coming today. We will, uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover this morning. You all are going to put me through a gauntlet. Uh, the way you do your services, speaking three times this morning, but uh, we're going to ease into it this morning, and uh, I have some uh, perhaps more um, meatier things to talk about as we go along, but we'll, we'll ease into it at uh, this first session this morning. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Bible is for kids. The Bible's for adults too, but it's also for kids. And in today's lesson as we begin, I, I want to encourage both the kids in their interest in the Scriptures, but also uh, those of us who are parents to think about the importance of teaching our children the Scriptures. Of course, as parents, we're, we're concerned about that. You wouldn't be here today or supported an effort like this if you didn't care about the faith and salvation of your children. It's a priority for you. And that's why you, you teach them and talk about God's Word from, from day to day. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, this text here says, From childhood you've been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. In the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy, Timothy was, was in some difficult circumstances, and I suppose that was not unique to his situation. It was not easy to be a Christian anywhere in that world. But he was in the role of an evangelist. He was a leader among God's people. And while he was at, at Ephesus, Paul writes him letters to guide him in his work, to encourage him, to stir him up, and uh, to, to help urge him along in, in doing the work of an evangelist. And he reminds Timothy about his childhood. And the value that he had received from his mother and grandmother and having been taught the Scriptures. Of course, most of you, you're familiar with Timothy's background. We know a little bit about his background. His spiritual teaching and instruction primarily coming from his mother and his grandmother. We're just told that his, his father was, was a Gentile. Yet Timothy, like a like someone who is of a Jewish background, his, his mother and grandmother probably, were impressed with the need to, to teach the Scriptures. If you go and you read through the Psalms, it's, it's very clear. It's very clear that the knowledge of God was supposed to be passed on from generation to generation within the context of the family as children would learn about the mighty acts of God. What Paul says in this passage is important in characterizing the Scriptures. Why they are valuable. Why we need to be teaching our children about the Scriptures. There are three points that he makes in, in this text. First of all, he says that the Scriptures make us wise. Young people are not wise. And I don't say that to be as a slight against young people, but they're, they're not wise, mainly because they lack experience. They're young. Nothing wrong with that. It's just reality. It's the way it is. How do you compensate for youth and inexperience? It's very, very difficult when you're in that place in life. The Scriptures. The Scriptures give wise instruction about how one is to navigate through life especially young people as they reach their teenage years and their early 20s and begin making decisions that will impact them for the rest of their lives. I mean, you can go and you can read, for example, in uh, the, the wisdom literature of, of Solomon. And Solomon writes Proverbs from the standpoint of a father to his son. And the father begs and pleads with the son to listen to what he has to say. To listen to His instruction. And certainly, children need to listen to the instruction of their parents. Because they have experience. Well, from another perspective though, as parents, Proverbs are just as critical for us in the kinds of things we're supposed to be teaching and instructing our children in. They make us wise. 
Paul says that the Scriptures build faith. The, scripture, the Scriptures reveal to us the plans and purposes of God. We're going to talk about some of that revealing later on this morning. But they seek to, to strengthen our faith, to build our faith, to give us confidence in our Creator and what He has done down through time to bring a Savior into the world, into our lives. Which is where all of it leads. He says that the Scriptures make us wise, they build faith, they lead us to salvation. As we talked about last night, if we're going to allow the language of Scripture to give us a vocabulary by which we can understand ourselves, we will come to the conclusion that we're sinners in need of salvation. God has accounted for that. That's why He sent us Jesus. To take the penalty for our sins. To offer us forgiveness. To bring us hope. They lead us to salvation. Now certainly, this is the foundation that as parents we need to be laying for our children. There will come a point in the life of all of our children... Like it or not, as parents, there will come a point in, in all of the lives of our children where they will have to make a decision for themselves about what they're going to do with what they've learned. They will ultimately make a decision about whether or not they're going to continue in the faith. Whether or not they're going to, to embrace Jesus in their life. Whether or not they're going to build their lives on Him upon His foundation, or they'd rather go their own way. Of course, as parents, we, we recognize that because we've made that decision. We've come to that crossroads in our lives. But as parents, we need to be doing everything possible to prepare our children when they come to that crossroads. The Scriptures are given to guide us, to aid us, in that process. But as Paul goes on in this chapter, in verses 16 and 17, he begins to articulate why the Scriptures are important, what the dynamic of the Scriptures are. There's a purpose to them. There's an intent behind them. He says that all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So as we continue on here this morning, we'll just work through this text and make some comments about the purpose and function and dynamic of the Scriptures. The first thing that, that Paul points out in, in this part of the text is that the Scriptures come from God. They come from God. That's why they're to have prominence in our lives and in our families. I mean, if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6, we reference that passage uh, earlier in the weekend. The way, the way it is imparted to, to Israel as they're embarking on their new life is that the knowledge of God, a discussion about God, is supposed to become part of the family. It's supposed to become a fixture in the house as you, you read the descriptions of that, of that text. Why? The Scriptures come from God. This is the means by which He has he's shown Himself to us. He's communicated to us. They're breathed out. They're breathed out by Him. And that's what makes them unique. Separate and apart from any other piece of writing we may come across. So we need to reverence God's Word. Learn its precepts. And obey its instructions. Next, Paul says that the Scriptures are, are profitable. The Scriptures are profitable. They're good. They're wholesome. They're beneficial, as this word would, would indicate. They're intended to bless our lives and to protect us from evil. Sometimes we, we, look, we look at God as if He's trying to, to prevent us from having a good life. Incidentally, that's the way usually teenagers view their parents' instructions, isn't it? They think their parents are just trying to keep them from having a good time. You know, the wise instruction of a parent, the wise instruction of, of God's Word is intended to protect. 
to protect the inexperienced from the pitfalls and dangers in life. To be able to avoid some of the consequences of sin. They're good. They're wholesome. They'll protect us. But it is interesting that he says that they're profitable. They're profitable. That's a word that we, we typically use in, in a financial context. We think about being profitable means that, that we're, we're growing our financial worth. How do you become profitable financially? You just make a wish and hope it comes true? Now, if you're going to be profitable, you have to invest. You have to invest. It's, it's very simple. It's very basic, fundamental. If you want to profit from anything, you have to invest in it. Well, so it is with God's Word. If you and I want to profit from the Scriptures, if we want our children to profit from its teaching, then we have to make an investment in the Scriptures. It takes time, effort, diligence, another word that Paul will use in his writing to Timothy. He says that the Scriptures teach. In life we have much to learn. It takes a great deal of humility to recognize our need for instruction. Scriptures teach us a number of important truths. They, they teach us that we have a maker, a creator. That's a very different lesson than what we typically hear in our society today. You're not an accident. You're not the result of, of an explosion of stardust. You, ha you have a creator who made you with a specific purpose in mind, as we've already talked about this week. And we have been made endowed with the image of God. That's what makes us separate and different from everything else in creation. And through that image, we're able to reflect God's glory into the world. The Scriptures teach us about our future. Yes, there's much to be said about, about life and in how we're to live our lives, but the Scriptures reveal there is a direction in which we're heading. Some look at, at life in this world and as if the world is just on a perilous course and there's nothing we can do to stop it. That is not the perspective that the Scriptures bring. Read Romans chapter 8. By the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is hope. There is a hopeful, bright future for the people of God. Next, he says that the Scriptures, they reprove. They reprove. One of the basic lessons the Bible teaches us is about sin. We said that, that sin is our basic problem that needs to be addressed. Sin, very simply, is, is the failure to reflect God's glory into the world. That's Romans 3.23 that is so often quoted. It's, it's a failure to meet the expectations of God. It's a transgression of God's law, as John would explain in 1 John 3 and in verse 4. What we know is that, that everyone has sinned, and the Bible demonstrates this. In a number of ways, it shows us examples of, of people who have sinned. It makes the point by, by way of instruction. Making the point that there's need for salvation. There's an undeniable case that is made against it, And that's what this term brings to mind. It is, it, it is as if we are in a court. And the accusations have been made against us. The case is clear, undeniable. And as Paul would say, every mouth needs to be stopped. Romans 3, when he, when he says that, he's, he's making the point that, well, in, in the ancient courts, when someone was finished making their defense, they would put their hand over their mouth. Or, as Paul happened to him, you'd get smacked in the mouth. When your defense of yourself was so absurd and ridiculous, and they'd heard enough. Every mouth needs to be stopped because we're all convicted of sin. But that's not all. That's not all. The, the Scriptures don't just make a case against us. The Scriptures correct. They reveal to us God's response to man's sin. 
as he says in the earlier passage, they direct us to salvation. By faith in the cross of Jesus and his resurrection, our sins can be corrected. We can be forgiven. We can go on to new life. The scriptures account for that. How they seek to train us. How they seek. Now we have come, we have come full circle. You see, with our children, they begin, they're beginning a new life. And we're trying to train and equip them for that new life. But if someone comes to faith in Christ, it happens all over again. They are reborn. And as someone who is, who is newly born, there is, there's much to learn. And so it is that the Scriptures train us in how to live righteously. Have you ever considered what it even means to live a righteous life? They teach us about how our new hearts are to be developed. We talked about the heart on Friday night. The Gospel seeks to reshape our heart. When the heart is reshaped, then the life changes. And we begin living in a new direction. Our discernment, our discernment requires constant training. Constant training. Why, why, why do we need to learn how to discern our life in the world? Well, the world is always changing. It's always changing. There are constant distortions that we're exposed to in the world as truth is attempted to be suppressed. And the gospel helps to train and equip us to make good, honest, wise, and accurate discernment about the world in which we live. And ultimately here he says that the scriptures, they equip us. They teach us that God made us to, to do good works. And this gets to how we exercise stewardship of God's world. While we've been made to do good works, we must first prepare ourselves. And as we begin any task, it requires that we learn, and that we practice. The scriptures use that kind of language as it relates to training and the process of equipping. God expects us to properly engage with the world. And if you're not properly trained and equipped, well, you can embarrass yourself in how you seek to reflect God's glory. But by teaching, reproving, correcting, training, the Scriptures will properly equip us for the job. Now in this, in this passage and really throughout these letters, Paul makes a compelling case as to why we need to value the Scriptures, as to why we need to make them a fixture in our families, why we need to use them to guide and direct our children as they embark on their life. The Scriptures make a compelling case to all of this. Lois and Eunice, had they not taught Timothy the Scriptures in his childhood, we probably wouldn't be here this morning talking about it. How differently his life would have been with the influence of his Gentile father and his mother and grandmother not having faith, Timothy's life would have been very, very different. Thankfully, though, he was taught. And as he came to that crossroads in his life, he made a decision to embrace faith in Christ. And his life was devoted to faithful service in the kingdom. I think that's what we all want for our children and for our grandchildren. Of course, that's not just going to be hap that's not going to just happen because we want it to happen. It will happen when we do our part in instilling the scriptures from childhood. Thank you for, for your attention this morning.